Hello people and welcome to how to start a city for 2022 in City Skylines. Hope you're having a wonderful day. As always at the start of each year we update our how to start template incorporating all the tips and tricks that we've learned over the previous series and just generally updating the template for those new to the game. This guide will be appropriate for those new to the game, those with experience of City Skylines might find this a little bit slow. However, maybe you've been out of the game for a while when you're interested in diving back into the upcoming Airports DLC and you want to pick up the basics of the game again, this guide will also serve that purpose too. For the first few episodes of this tutorial series, I will only be using vanilla assets. However, as the city grows and the series progresses, we will gradually introduce each DLC and spend an episode focusing on exactly what it changes from the base game. Now there are a few things I want to run over uh, on the start screen before we even dive into a map and this is this icon here for content manager. We're going to come into this. We're going to come down to mods on the left. Now everyone's mod list here will be different depending on how many mods you are and aren't subscribed to, all of which are available on the Steam Workshop. Now these automatically come organised alphabetically, so scroll down to you and there is an option here for unlimited oil and ore. For those that do not know, when you're extracting this resource in the game through your industrial areas, they will deplete over time as the resource is extracted. This makes placing larger oil and ore areas quite off-putting because eventually they will become redundant. So it's up to you whether or not you want to take this option for unlimited oil and ore where that resource will not deplete as it's extracted. Totally optional. I am playing with every single DLC and content creator pack here listed on the left. And like I mentioned, I will only use vanilla assets for the first few episodes before we start exploring the DLCs. And a quick little plug, I am an official partner to Instant Gaming, they have ridiculously cheap codes, I do get a little kickback for every purchase, so thank you very much if you use the link, it does help support me directly. Otherwise, let's get started with a new game shall we? So we're going to come down to the vanilla maps, and you can see all the maps you get added with the DLCs, there is a fair few of them. Uh, to which we also have uh, vanilla map tier lists on the channel as well. If you're wondering which map might be best for you, then I'll leave those pinned in the right of the video as well. I'm going to go for this one right here, Diamond Coast. So from this point, you can take left-hand traffic if you want. I have just kind of always played the game right-hand traffic, so that's what I'm used to. But if you want left-hand traffic, then take this option here. I'm going to leave it as right-hand traffic. And then you also get a breakdown of what natural resources are available alongside how much water and then what outside connections you have available. This map happens to have all of them and how much of the map is suitable for building, which this one has 69%, which is nice and also quite high for a suitable building area. And then you can also change the theme and custom map theme, but you don't need to bother with these when you're first starting the game. Once you've named your city, chosen your traffic and chosen your map, you want to hit this button down here where we can get started. Okay guys, so here we are in our first City Skylines map. There are a few things we want to run over uh, before we start building. Uh, the game will start paused. You can control this with your spacebar. Leave it paused for the entire time we build until I say play because it's going to eat into our budget otherwise. There are also a couple of icons here on the screen that you guys won't see. This is this slider down here. The little sun and cloud and the cinematic camera. These are mods I use for recording. So you don't need to worry about them. Doesn't affect the build and doesn't affect the game. So every city skylines map uh, will start with this, uh, two highway roads that are ready to be expanded and where you start your city from. So this is what we're going to have a look at. So the first thing I'm going to force you to build is a service interchange, which is a way for people to get on and off the highway and into the city. This is going to force you to get used to the road snapping tools here and how they all behave and complement one another. Really treat these first few cities as disposable you're not going to come into this game and recreate lower manhattan straight away although that is possible especially with the mods but it's going to take a while to get there okay the first city you make isn't going to be amazing because you're just getting used to how the game functions and how everything works with one another so if you screw this start up just restart and get used to it because getting used to the road tools right at the start is really going to make a world of difference and i'll try and explain them the best i can here as well so we're going to click on roads and this is going to open up a new tab where we have small, medium, large, highway, intersections, maintenance and road tolls and a few other things in here as well. But for right now, we just want to focus on the two lane road. It's going to draw out from the right side of my highway and as we begin to draw, you will see a second blue line appear at the top. These are markers of 10 tiles. So this would be 20, 30, 40 and so on. They also appear at intervals of 5, so that would be 15, 25, and so on and so forth. If 
If you turn off road length, these lines don't appear. And the road will move freeform, not snapping into those measurements. With road length back on, you'll see that they appear. So the first thing I want you to do is with your two lane, two way road is to draw out by a measurement of 60 tiles, which is a cost of 2,400. Okay. Doing this unlocks the two lane one way road, which is what we need because this is a one way system. The highways are one way indicated by the enormous arrows on them. So I'm going to select my two lane one way road, and then I'm going to come back into the tools down here and grab this upgrade option, which is like a blue exclamation mark. And then I'm going to left click that road that we've just drawn in to upgrade it into one way road. Then I'm going to come back into my straight road tool and repeat the exact measurement this time on this side. And doing that gives us this little icon here, which is like a road with a red cross across the top of it, like a T. Uh, this means that there's a broken connection and you can see why, because the two one way systems are not in synchronization with each other. So to do this, come back into your upgrade tool with your two lane road selected. And then we're going to right click with the upgrade option to change the direction of the roads. See there, breaks the connection because it's not flowing. Right click with the upgrade tool, we'll fix that. So we're now left with two expanses of one way road that flow straight into our city. Some people will prefer to move immediately into four lane road. Some people will move into an expansive kind of dirt road grid. There is lots of different ways to start the city. Mine is probably the more expensive. So right now we'll have something that looks like this. Then I'm going to come into my medium roads and I'm going to grab uh, the four lane road. I'm going to come down to this little icon here, which is elevation step. See the minute it's just a solid white bar. Every time we click this, the bar gets smaller and then it'll go back to its original size. What this is referring to is when we press our page up key, the road will turn into a bridge and page down will bring it back down. And the elevation step controls exactly that, how much of a step in elevation it takes with each press of the page up and page down keys respectively. So bring it down to the lowest elevation point, which is two clicks, this smaller blue bar, and then this is what we're going to be using. So looking at our two lane one way roads that we've just drawn in, we can see that we have these smaller blue circles either side. Okay. So what this is referring to is a road guideline. If we turn off the road guideline, you can see that these smaller blue circles stop appearing. If we put them back on, we can find them again. These are referring to intervals of 10. So what I want you to do is to come along to the second one, which is an interval of 20. Then we're then going to move down on that road guideline, which again, you can see is the dotted line. We turn off road guideline. These don't appear. So second one, we're going to come down and then we're going to line up the road in the four tile space either side. We're going to elevate up by three steps using the lowest elevation. We're going to click. And then we're going to draw across by a distance 1710, which is going to give me a bridge across my highway roads here. You can see how it's slightly on an angle. That's just because this side of the terrain is slightly higher than the other. Don't need to worry too much about terrain heights right now, but that's why it's happening. If you're wondering, you'll see where the terrain is slightly uneven, but don't need to worry about that just yet. So once you have your bridge, we're then going to click again onto the ends of them and then come out to this 10 marker and then page down, back down to earth. The perfect slope is actually 12 tiles. You can see where it kind of snaps back there as you move into 13. But I'm just going to do distances of 10 for right now because that's all I need. And the same again on this side, out to that second 10 line and back down to earth with page down. We now have a bridge. I'm going to come back into my small roads. I'm going to grab the uh, two lane one way road. And then I'm going to grab a curve tool here as well. I'm also going to turn off my road guideline. And what we're going to do here is build our first roundabout. So on either side of the bridge where it comes back down to earth, we're going to click and then we're going to move out to the right hand side. And again, we want to follow that second blue line, which is showing me that I'm at an interval of five tiles. I'm going to click and then move up again by five tiles indicated by that second blue line. And then you repeat this three times. And you now have a perfect roundabout. So you can do this seven by seven, six by six, 10 by 10. Obviously the larger you go, the larger the roundabout will be and vice versa. If you're going smaller then the smaller the roundabout will be. But for what we need for a service interchange roundabout, a five by five roundabout is exactly what we need. And then you want to repeat exactly the same thing on this side again as well. So 
but now we have two roundabouts on either side of the bridge. This is going to be fine. So now we need to build the slip ramps. So again, I'm going to come into my two lane one way road again, and I'm going to grab the straight road tool this time. So I'm going to align with this blue circle just past the highway bridge. Okay, so here's the end of our highway. Again, road guideline has to be on for these to appear. Going to align with this one, leaving a tile between the new road and the old road that we've drawn in. And then I'm going to draw out to the right by a distance of 120. Okay. Then following this new road guideline, I'm going to leave a distance of four tiles between this new road and the road we just placed to do 120 again. Okay. So it's nice and simple. Everyone's happy at the minute. And then I'm going to grab my two lane, two way road. And I'm going to align this with these top two tiles here from the grid. So I'm pointing out to these two right here. Okay. I want the road to fill these spaces here. All right. Then I'm going to draw this up by a distance of 280, which will leave us something looking a little bit like this. Okay. Kind of like a broken T. Then from the top of the road that we've just drawn, we're going to grab our curve road tool again. We're going to curve up to the road guideline that emanates from the roundabout, this one right here. We're going to click and then we're going to curve over again to match up with that road guideline at a cost of 360. Grab the straight road tool and then feed this into the roundabout. It should be mentioned that if you're drawing a roundabout and you want to come off the roundabout, that isn't a point that's north, east, south or west, that you need to brace the roundabout with a cross in the middle beforehand, like so. So if I wanted to draw out from here now, then I could do. If I didn't brace the roundabout before, then the roundabout would turn into like an egg shape. But when you're just getting used to the game, just stick to snapping off north, east, south and west. It'll be a lot easier. Okay, wonderful. So now we want to connect these two roads in. I'm going to grab my two lane one way road again. This time with the free form road, which is this curvy one right here. And I'm going to draw it out. And then I'm going to connect in by 160. Exactly the same on this side again as well. We can see we have this broken icon. So back into the upgrade tool, give it a right click, the direction will change and everyone is happy. Let's now get these roads hooked into the highway. So again, continuing to use my two lane one way road with the straight road tool, I'm going to draw down into the highway by a distance of 360 in construction cost and then upgrade my direction. Exactly the same on this side come down into the road at a construction cost of 360. And that's going to give me a nice little symmetrical slip ramp into the roundabout to get people on and off the highway. You now want to repeat this process exactly on the other side. So I'll speed this up. And there we have a really nicely designed, super cute looking uh, symmetrical service interchange. I guess this is a variation of the dumbbell or dog bone interchange. Um, if you are looking for different designs of these, I do cover a fair amount of vanilla City Skylines content. I do have a video that covers three different versions of this if you're looking for ways to get on off the highway. Uh, those videos will be linked down below and pinned in the video here today as well. So off this left roundabout, I'm going to draw off the leftmost side and let's come out by a distance of 40 tiles, which is 2,400. Then I'm going to come into my small roads and I'm going to grab uh, some of these two lane roads as well. So drawing another junction immediately off a roundabout is always a bad idea. Uh, the AI, the traffic AI specifically, won't read uh, two junctions or two nodes this close together amazingly well. So what I like to do, again, using my road guideline tool here to identify these blue circles, I'm going to draw one out on the 20 marker here, and then I'm just going to start drawing down and mapping out some initial residential holding patterns uh, for us to make use of. So you'll notice that when we're working with roads that have grids, which means that things can be zoned alongside them, that we have kind of a darker inner blue circle, which is the size of the road. And then we also have kind of a lighter outer blue circle. What the outer blue circle is referring to is how the grid pattern will emanate from that new road. So lining it up with current existing grids is really going to help you maximize the amount of zonable space that you have. And I would really recommend 
just sticking into the grid when you're first getting used to the game. It just makes the game a lot easier because it really kind of lends itself into that grid. So you can see how the outer blue circle works. I'm just lining up all my zonings to get the most amount of zonable space because this is where I'll have my first initial residential layouts. Okay, so that's going to be fine for that. I want to do exactly the same thing with my industrial traffic now as well. So from the right side of this roundabout, I'm going to draw out again by a distance of 40 tiles. That's going to be wonderful. What I'm also going to do here is introduce a one-way flow system uh, into my industrial area. And once industrial traffic starts to enter, you'll see how this works. So again, grabbing my two-lane one-way road. I'm going to come out by a distance of 25 tiles. All right. And then I'm going to bring this up to the road guideline of that big four-lane road. And then hook it back in. Then I'm going to come into my two lane gravel roads and again using that tip with the uh, lighter outer blue circle to really maximize uh, the zoning uh, patterns that I have available. Just bring them in patterns like so, okay. And then we can maybe bring some out of these smaller roads. So there's a couple of different designs you can do. And then why don't I also bring one out here that can sit parallel with my highway and function as a frontage road. So this is kind of it uh, from my initial uh, starting road layout initially. Uh, we'll now talk about services because sims need uh, power and water in order to live in the city, right? So that's what we're going to do next. So coming back down to these icons along the bottom, we have electricity, which is an option. So there is a coal power plant, uh, which is a pollutive building. This will cause ground pollution, which can affect water towers and residential areas and commercial will cause people to get sick. Likewise with noise pollution. Now both of these values are indicated by this kind of darker red circle that comes off from the building. And you can see the little barrel and headphone icon on the bottom of the road here that indicates that this radius is referring to ground pollution and noise pollution. So you want to make sure that there's no residential buildings within this radius because just like real life, you wouldn't want to live right next door to a coal power plant. Extremely loud, extremely pollutive. Sims don't like it either. If you do go for your coal power plant, then you can place it here. For this particular tutorial, I'm going to run uh, with a couple of wind turbines. It's kind of up to you. You can see, you know, one produces slightly less power for a reduced upkeep cost. So it's all about trading off the upkeep costs and deciding whether or not you want to go clean energy or indeed uh, pollutive. But I have some opportunities for wind turbines here. So once we click the wind turbine, we'll notice that the map changes uh, into this darker blue kind of overlay like a heat map right and this is indicating uh, the wind spots so you see as i move the wind turbine into a lighter space it's going to produce four megawatts of power if it's in a darker region it's going to produce seven and then eight towards the coast so this is what this blue heat map is referring to it's the way you're going to get the most production out of your wind turbines so i'm just going to place in two wind turbines again i'm keeping my game paused because these are going to start charging me upkeep at once the city begins to play. So we're going to have that there, but if you wanted to use coal here, you absolutely can. Just place a coal plant somewhere within your industrial layout, keep it away from the residentials. But for this map, I'm going to go with a couple of wind turbines. It's entirely up to you. So for our water, we have a couple of different options. We have a pumping station, a water tower, and a drain pipe. So when we select a water asset, you will notice that the map turns white and all of the blue waterways are highlighted with arrows on them. What the arrows are referring to is the direction of flow. This is where the water will flow down. So this is important because you don't want your water drain pipe, which is sewage upstream from your pumping station, because you're just going to suck up sewage back into your water network and then people will start drinking sewage. Sims will get sick and your city will die. To do this, I'm going to place my water drain pipe downstream from my water pumping station. Okay. Something a little bit like that. That's going to be fine. Then I'm going to place in my water pipes, which are here. And we can see that these two currently have a little kind of pipe symbol on them that's shown as broken. And that means that they're not connected to anything because we need to connect them into water pipes. So for this, I'm going to connect them both together. You can hook sewage and water into the same pipe network. It doesn't matter. Technically, there is two pipes. So one for sewage, one for water. So they can be connected. Don't worry about that. 
And then what I'm going to do is bring my water pipe over to my city. Of course, depending what map you start on, this distance might be shorter or longer. You just kind of have to judge it based on what map you play. And then I'm just going to run this straight down the main roads. So very much like the road tool, we can see kind of a lighter blue circle. This is indicating the area of coverage that will happen from these water pipes. So again, I'm just going to line it up to make the most out of it. You can, of course, come under your roads if you want to be a little truer to real life. Because, you know, that's where water pipes live. They are under the roads for maintenance purposes and whatnot. But you don't have to do that. For right now, just getting coverage across all our zonable space is going to be absolutely fine. Okay, let's also bring one down here as well. So you can just see how I'm eyeing them up. They want to come back into electricity and grab some power lines. Now these will just be temporary power lines because I need to connect uh, my wind turbines over to my water pumps. One there and one there. If you do have the budget free, you can just place another wind turbine down here. But I'm just going to use the power lines to transfer the power. Bring down uh, some power lines into my first residential area. So you can see these power assets have like a blue radius coming out of them. If there is a building within this radius, the power will jump through and will carry on jumping through if there's other buildings nearby. If there's not, you will need to use power lines to transfer the power. So that's what that's referring to. You'll see how it all kind of jumps through once we get some zoning starting to happen. Uh, but otherwise, that is all of our services, uh, both power and water accounted for. I'm left with 6,665 in the bank. So I think what I'm going to do is just spend a little bit more of that continually increasing my road network. Okay, let's bring these up in a couple of different spots. And then likewise down here as well. Making sure again that they are within the uh, coverage radius of the water. And that's fine. So there we go. This is my initial setup. Uh, again, super expensive. Some people will prefer to move into a grid layout. I prefer just making it look good from the start, but uh, we'll have a little look at how this plays out. So now we'll talk about zoning, which is this icon down here, represented by the multicolored squares. You come into this and we have a couple of different options available. We have low density residential, low density commercial and industrial zoning. And currently locked and tied to milestone progression is high density residential, which is apartment blocks, skyscrapers and the such like. At high density commercial, which is larger commercial lots. And then we also have office zoning, which is essentially kind of a high density version of industrial zoning, uh, which requires higher education and better jobs. But we'll cover that once we get to it. We're a little while away from office zoning yet. And our zoning demands are represented by these three little bars down here. So we can see we currently have full demand for uh, residential, zero demand for commercial and zero demand for industry. These will fluctuate throughout your playthrough and you can satisfy them as and when you want to, and we'll talk about a few things and how to satisfy them in a minute as well. Uh, but let's start zoning up, okay? So there's a couple of different zoning tools you can do with fill, which will fill in all adjacent tiles that it can reach. There is a marquee tool where you can manually paint out your zonings. You can also right click to remove as well. And then there is a brush where you can paint out zonings. I never ever use these brush tools. Okay, so you can do that if you want, but just don't. <laughs> there's, there's better ways to zone, okay? So I usually use the marquee tool. Now a zoning won't grow any bigger than 4x4. Four four. You can do 2x2, two two, you can do 1, you can do 3x3, three three, you can do 3x4, do 4x3. Any kind of variation of these will bring in assets, but never any bigger than 4x4. Four four. If you need assets bigger than 4x4, four four, then this is where service assets and unique buildings come into it but we'll get to them eventually. So with zoning, there is something I like to do uh, called specifically zoning, which is where we paint out four by four tiles uh, within your grid network that we've just painted out, okay? So you can do this if you like. The point of what it does is, is it marks out very specific four by four lots, which gives you a much more uniform looking suburb rather than just doing this and then letting the game choose what size lots spawn in this mass kind of zoned out grid. So I'm going to specifically zone up some 4x4 residential lots here. Again, just remembering that my game is still paused. And of course you need to alternate them because if I was to draw in 
this one here, then different sizes and shapes can grow. So, you know, once one 4x4 comes in, come in and do the next lot. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> I should hope so anyway. All right, I'll bring these in. And what I'm going to do is actually leave uh, zoning from spawning on the main road. Because this is going to cause people to stop and start on the main road, which is only going to increase traffic. So I want them to come off onto my smaller kind of collector and local roads here. Okay, so there I have my first initial patchwork layout of residential. Again, this is totally my style of play. You can just mass zone this. It will just give you a little less nice looking suburb because it'll be lots of different shapes and size houses. And then from this point now, uh, we can hit play by hitting one or spacebar. And the game will start to play here. You can also move through the speeds using one, two, and three on your keyboard to move through speeds one, two, and three as well. So whilst our first uh, residential lots come in, I want to talk to you about the economy screen. So if we come into our info views up here, we can see that we're currently producing at uh, 14 megawatts of power, which is a lot more than a city of this side needs. So I'm going to come into my economy and then I'm going to drop the daytime slider of electricity under the budget tab. If you are playing with the day night cycle, you will also need to amend your night cycles as well. Again, both represented by a sun and a moon. So I'm going to bring my electricity slider in the daytime down to about 60%. As I play the game, you will notice that our electricity production will drop because it has less funding, but we're still producing way more than the current than the city currently needs. But for right now, the city is relatively small. You will also want to do the exact same thing with your water slider as well. Just bring it down and make sure that your needs here aren't falling into the orange. That's when you'll start to get people complaining that there's not enough of it, at which point we add more funding uh, into our budget panel. So you will see that in a minute we're losing 961 a week. This is more than fine. You know, this start to the city, it's very expensive. Once the tax pays are in, this will start to balance itself out. You can see here we have an icon that this guy uh, currently has not enough electricity. And that's just because we're not sinking through yet. And once more residentials come up in this pattern, the power will start jumping through. If you leave these icons unattended for too long, the building will become abandoned and you'll have to demolish it and let it regrow again. It's not the end of the world, but you want to make sure you don't start getting too many of these icons. And my checkerboard pattern has totally filled in here. So I can now fill it in again. Likewise over here as well. Let's trim those off. It's all just about waiting for these to come in. Yeah, don't worry about the power. Once these guys uh, spawn up, the power's going to jump through and you'll see all these icons disappear. So you see how it just disappeared? And then boom, 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 boom. The power is now jumping through. And everyone here now has access to electricity. Okay. So just take a little bit of time to enjoy your city, right? You're going to see all these people coming in and new houses developing. Feel free to take inspiration from Google Earth for your road layouts for your residential areas. Think about places that you drive around in real life and take inspiration from them. It really makes a world of difference to how your cities look. Okay, but I've still got some free uh, residential squares. So while all this is happening, I can notice that I'm getting peaks for commercial and industrial demand starting to appear because these new people, they want places to shop and they need places to work. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to come into my industrial zone in now and move over to my industrial side of town. Now with this one-way system, I don't want anyone stopping on the one-way system. So I want no zone in here. So I'm going to start my zone in a tile free from the one-way system and then let this fill out this space. Likewise over here. And then over here as well. This should be enough for right now, but you can just see I'm not having any zoning along the one-way system because I don't want people stopping and starting on this road. Okay, just let them go through all the industrial zoning within these pockets here. Likewise, with my commercial zoning, I can now bring this little blue one over. And how about we start to create maybe a little bit of a commercial high street, right? Along the main road, nearby to town, my commercial is going to sit here. So commercial it will require goods to be delivered. These can either be imported from outside of the map using the highway, or they can be produced locally using industrial zoning. But again, we'll come into kind of the supply and demand of the game once we get used to it a little bit more, a few episodes into this series. So here we go. You see I'm still tutoring along. I'm still making a little bit of a loss, but it's gradually getting shorter and shorter. 
you can again uh, check your water demand and see that I'm still making way more water than I need. So I can probably bring these sliders right down to the bottom, 50%. We'll just enjoy flying about your city. Okay, start planning out maybe where some parks can appear or you know, indeed where you might want to do some detailing. Think about where your downtown is going to lie eventually. You're going to create kind of this mega metropolis that spans for miles or are you going to chisel out a skyline? Is your map going to be entirely kind of small towns? So we can also see now that our uh, factories are complaining of not enough electricity and that's just because I haven't connected them in. So again, I can grab this kind of blue radius, right? And we'll draw it over the roundabout, over our interchange and into the blue radius. Again, once the city becomes a little more established and we're making money, this will all sort itself out and we can redesign these power lines. So buildings sink through to the windmills. Wonderful. So getting our commercial zone in here now, I think it might also zone up a few commercial lots this side as well. Uh, commercial zoning does have a noise pollution value which we can't actually check yet. But to avoid this happening, you just want to avoid drawing lots of commercial zoning very close to residential. You can get away with some of them. Like, you know, this is fine. It's just a small patch, but vast amounts of it so close to residential will start causing noise pollution issues. So if you're suffering with that, then that's why. The first thing you're really looking to do is uh, hit your first milestone, which is a population of 500. Uh, this really kind of sorts out money-wise. So you can see, you know, we're still making... A tiny little loss and we're getting some more power information here as well so what's happening let's have a little look shall we so you see now how electricity availability is now in the red that means that we're not producing enough for the current demands of the city so back into your economy tab and slightly increase the fund into electricity let the game play the value will amend see i'm just about in the green now so i'm going to increase this a little bit more because i'm going to need to do it again soon anyway there you go slightly more in the green and everyone's happy. So you'll see at the minute how I'm currently uh, minus 281 in bank balance and I'm losing uh, 28 weekly income. This was at like minus 900 when we first started. So you can just start to see as these taxpayers come in, we're going to start making uh, more and more money. You can see some more zoning opportunities available here now. And here are our first sims too. Yes, please. So you see how they're using our little one-way system here nice right using the little highway slip lanes to get around there we go and we can see our industrial traffic now so you see how he's flowing through the one-way system and then coming into the industrial area and then he's leaving again so just while your city ticks over and we slowly crawl into uh, the green just uh, take a bit of time to enjoy what you've built and like i said you know this might look like a complicated interchange to build, but I hope I've explained it well and how the kind of road tools and grid snapping and road guideline and road length all work with each other to create these types of designs. Okay, I hope it's somewhat followable. <laughs> and then you see again, okay, getting a few more power icons that are saying, nope, not enough power anymore. So come into your info view, check your power outlet again. You can see we're making a lot less now. So it's brings us up to about 80%. Should sort us out. Yeah, there you go. Once you get back to 100% of the slider, that's the point where you really want to probably start considering placing another power source, either another wind turbine or a coal power plant. But we're going to be okay for right now. So again, I can see my residential demand is starting to peak. So I'm going to zone up this first tile. But all the empty ones that are in there anyway. Likewise over here too. Just keep satisfying those demands. Because we really want to get to a population of 500 uh, as soon as possible. There's so many different ways to play this game. You know, others prefer to dive into kind of maximizing and getting the most out of traffic flow. Others love all the data uh, behind the city, which there is lots of as well. And others just prefer to make the city look good. I'm definitely an aesthetically focused player and there is currently three uh, full vanilla cities uh, let's plays on the channel if you want to check them out as well and see how I kind of play the game and you can do as well and the game becomes a vastly different experience uh, with mods as well there is like 250,000 items <laughs> on the uh, on the steam workshop at the minute it's uh it's pretty crazy the game 
changes a lot with the mods, like ridiculously so. So really, you can sink thousands of hours into this game, alright? You can do so much with it. But our population is continuing to grow by 88 a week, slowly climbing up towards that 500. Again, getting some more people whinging that there isn't enough electricity, so that's fine. We'll come back into 100% now. That's going to be wonderful. And then all the icons disappear, and everyone becomes happy again. And we are excruciatingly close to that next milestone. And there it is. So, this is what a milestone looks like, and they are tied to population counts. The next one being 1,000, after that 1,600, 2,600, 5,000, and so on and so forth. At each of these milestones, we unlock new features, new buildings, new services, various different things, all of which are detailed within this little scroll box under the milestone. If you do forget, you can hit the button down in the bottom left, which will bring up the last one you unlocked as well. So with Little Hamlet, we are gaining access to taxes and loans, two very important things that are going to help us out straight away. We also have new services, garbage, healthcare and education. Two of these are very important immediately. And then some new buildings which are tied into the new services. So a school, recycling centres, landfill sites. Wonderful. So once we've hit that milestone, we do get a big cash injection. So we've hit 23. So the first thing I want to do is come into my economy tab and come across to taxes. So this is where we set the tax rate for each uh, style of zoning. 12% is the golden area. Any higher than that and Sims will start to complain of high taxes. Any lower and you're not really making the maximum amount of income that you can. We can't set the high density versions yet because we haven't unlocked them. But you can set your low density. So 12% for everything under your taxes. Also come into your loans and you can take free 20,000 here. You will pay it back in installments, but you won't notice this. And it's an extra free 20k to spend on the city. Fantastic. So, some things we need to place. First of all, you're going to come into your garbage and industry uh, tab down here. I believe for people without the industry's DLC, this just says garbage. But either way, it's under here. You're going to come into the landfill site. And we're going to place a landfill because this is going to collect uh, rubbish or garbage from the city. You are playing with the Green Cities DLC, you also have access to a recycling centre. Difference between these, the recycling centre is less pollutive than the landfill site, and it also doesn't fill up. And um, The landfill sites, once they are around for a while, they will fill, so I'm going to place one here. So you will eventually get to the point where you need to empty your landfill sites into incineration plants. However, there are other options available, like I said, the recycling centre comes with the Green Cities DLC. There's also two more options down here for Waste Transfer Facility and Waste Processing Complex, which come with the Sunset Harbour DLC, respectively. But for our vanilla friends, you'll just have the landfill site and the incineration plant to process garbage right now. So that's going to take care of garbage for the city uh, for a good uh, long while. We don't have to worry about that. Next thing we have is healthcare along the tab. So you have two different clinics depending on your theme. If you're with the European theme, you'll have this one. The regular game has the med clinic. Healthcare isn't a massively fleshed out mechanic in city skylines and your sims won't really get sick unless they're living in one of those pollution radiuses that we looked at earlier. Med clinics are essentially just parks that make sims happy and increase land value. You'll never really get that much use out of medicine. It definitely needs to be looked at for cities too, I think. Uh, but for right now, we don't really need them because they're costing 400 a week. I'm only making 1200 That's like a third of the budget. So, don't need it yet. Ignore healthcare for right now. But the next thing we unlocked was education. Uh, where we can now place down some schools. So we'll have a little look at that as well. So, absolutely, we could just grab a school and place it on a road and be done with it. But because this is a service asset and it's something... I think deserves to stand out a little bit more on its own. So I'm going to give it its own little dedicated road. So back within my residential area of the map here, I'm going to click on this road again and I'm going to start drawing up about 200. And then I'm just going to bring it parallel with the road that we have here. I'm, a, I'm aware I'm losing commercial zoning. We don't need to worry about that right now. And then just take away the zonings with your zoning tool by right clicking. And then I'm going to place my school uh, you'll notice I have two different schools here. One is from the European theme, one is from the regular theme. You can turn both on in the menu if you want. So you'll have either one of these two. There is also an alternative with the Green Cities DLC. It gives you a community school, does exactly the same thing, just has different student capacity, upkeep and maintenance costs. So again, it's a trade-off, whichever one you want. 
Community Skill was a nice looking asset as well, but we'll go with the base game one. I'm just going to place this here. And you'll notice as we place it, everyone becomes tremendously happy. And we can see that we're going to start satisfying our elementary school demand with 300 capacity. And all these sims here are currently uneducated. And this same process applies for high schools and universities as well. So when you click on any kind of zoned asset, you'll notice that it has five stages. Some of these buildings will have three, but most will have five. And this is as it moves through its levels. As it goes through levels one to five, it will increasingly pay more tax and hold more people, thus earning you more money and increasing your population. So houses leveling up is a good thing. You want to level up houses. But otherwise, since we've had that big cash injection, uh, we can now uh, begin expanding uh, the road network here, can't we? So why don't we come back to our main uh, road here? I'm going to bring it out by another 10. And then how about we change up the angles now? Let's bring in a curve road tool. I'm going to bring in a nice big 20 curve. A cost of 1920. Okay. And then just allow the main road to flow in and out. I can then continue to repeat the designs that we've been using in and around this space here to, again, maximize the zonable opportunities where I can keep bringing in residential patterns here, okay? There's a couple of different things that we can get involved with. Again, what I would just suggest, you can come into these areas and start doing freeform roads if you want, but whilst you're getting used to the game, really maximize the space you have available. Stick to 90 degree angles, just get used to how the road mechanics work with each other, how the zoning kind of works, and just get to grips with it before you start getting to freeform stuff. And not forgetting that we are going to need to uh, bring out our water coverage, right? Because there's going to be new houses over here. We won't have to worry about power because we can see we're just going to sink through now, where all the blue lines are joining together, so that won't be a problem. And again, I'm going to respect my specifically zoned 4x4 patterns. Because in the long run, it's going to give me a much more uniform looking suburb. should also mention at this point as well that if you do zone uh, too much residential in one go, then you can suffer from something known as a death wave. Uh, that's just where too many people come into the city at once from too much zoning. And then from that, a lot of those people will die at the same time as well, thus giving you enormous death waves that happen across the city. So slow and steady with residential zoning is going to be fine. But that's going to be nice. Going to start getting some new houses in here now. Yes, please. You'll also notice that I'm saving uh, some space here uh, for decoration because once we hit the next couple of milestones, we're going to come into some decoration opportunities, which is very much where a lot of the fun lies in the game for me. So it's a really kind of chill game. You know, it's a little bit of squeaky bum time once you're at the start there and you're just getting the road networks in, but you can just see, just take it nice and chill. Everything always works out in the end. Okay, my zoning's are coming in here now as well. Fantastic. You can see where everything's filled in, so I can now do the mass zone on the second spaces. All right. And that's going to be nice to me. So now the point of the game is to just continually expand your services, try out different designs, and uh, see what you can come up with. See, we're getting a little more industrial demand now, so I'm going to satisfy this by zoning up another batch of this industrial block that's happening here. Okay, very nice indeed. See those power icons again? What's happening? Are we out of power? Yes, we are. That's fine. So like I mentioned, I never really increase the budget past 100% once I get to this point where I'm getting power warnings, but the budget is at 100%, I will just place in another power source now. So I'm going to pop in another wind turbine here as well. Now we do want to bear in mind that we are edging rather close. So you can see where this wind turbine is here. You see its noise pollution radius is just spilling into the residential here now. So there's probably something I can do to align these a little more sensibly. I think I'm just going to bring them over into a line like this, okay? Just so we're away from the residentials. And then I can use this line here now as, you know, don't go any closer to the wind turbines. Otherwise, my sims are going to start suffering from noise pollution. So the power will go away and immediately be replaced by some sewage, <laughs> which is fine. We'll come back into our budget and now we can bring the sewage and water treatment up. That should satisfy everyone's demand there we go and they slowly tick off as the game reads it as corrected so i'm going to come back over to my industrial area now and i want to create another connection through these roads back onto the main four lane arterial road i'm going to do this a 
again with another one-way system. So hopefully now we can see just how this one-way system functions. So for people wanting to get into the industrial area, they can follow the one-way system around, which keeps everyone moving in the same direction and then brings them back out onto the arterial. This one-way system wasn't here and we only had this junction as a two-way. Everyone will be trying to force their way into this one junction. So to use one-way systems to keep traffic flowing in a specific direction so it's not backing onto itself is always a nice idea. And again, there's plenty of examples throughout my vanilla Let's Plays of where we've used uh, one-way systems to good effect. Of course, which again is all linked down below. So you'll see what's happening here. We're getting quite a lot of cars coming in at once. This is just because we've zoned up a lot of new uh, residentials and the vast majority of these people are all heading to their new homes. So this isn't chronic traffic, it's just kind of temporary until traffic clears. And like I spoke about earlier, you see how these junctions are a little bit close together. You tend to want to avoid this in cities, so in hindsight I'm going to grab that two lane road again, go to my straight road tool, and this time bring the connection behind the school. Got to the connection there, and then just bring in the road so it reads as connected, but not connected onto the main road. And that should just help my traffic flow a little bit too. See how just removing that second junction so close just allows people to come through. But again, it's just temporary while people move in. We're not experiencing traffic problems at the minute, okay? Very nice indeed. So let's start to look at some interconnectivity there on this side now as well. Why don't we bring down the road that connects everyone together here and then again feeds back into the main road. Okay, and again there's opportunities to start maximising uh, the zonable space if you want to. Okay, so I'll just know that I'm preparing for more specific 4x4 residentials to start appearing in this part of town. Again, the specific zoning won't be for everyone, but it will pay off in the long run, alright? And I'm now at the point where we need a fair bit more industry. So again, we can just use the same roads and continue uh, to use the same themes and designs for our industrial area. Again, I might want to do a similar thing here where I'm turning this road off after a certain point. Let's maybe bring it up to this one, and then here I can come to my curve tool, get that big 20 road length marker curve again, and then repeat it as we move up, and then allow for some road to kind of span off towards the coastline now and continue to expand out there as well. Likewise with the one-way system, it can continue to be used in the uh, configuration that you already have it, continue to satisfy these demands, and periodically uh, connecting back into your main road so people can get around. And I'm going to follow the same premise here. Um, I don't want zoning uh, backing on to these kind of main flow roads, okay? And there's our next milestone. Fantastic. So with the Worthy Village milestone, there's a population of a thousand. We get a new area, which is a new tile. Uh, you get nine of these if you're on the vanilla game and the consoles. However, with the Steam Workshop, you can get 25 and 81 tiles as well. Uh, we also unlock districts, which are kind of ways to specialise certain areas um, as districts, but we'll cover that in a separate episode. We also get emergency services and police, plus unit buildings, uh, two industrial specialisations, and then some other little DLC bits and pieces, uh, which we won't cover for a little while yet. But okay, new milestone, again, big cash influx down here at the bottom, and more of these icons are now available to us. So I'm going to come into my emergency services. I'm going to grab the fire house here. Now, you can see again, as we select this building, we get a heat map and a current fire safety. The larger fire hazards are highlighted in red, which you would imagine all the trees have potential for forest fires and the houses can burn down as well. So I'm going to place my little firehouse here, just in my industrial area. And again, this is going to make uh, the industrial people uh, very happy and help them level up as well, which again, like the houses, as they move through their levels, will hold more workers and pay more tax, which is always good things for you. Next thing we unlocked uh, was the police station, so we can come into the police department here and grab our vanilla uh, police station. And again, because it's kind of a similarly important service asset to the school, I want this to stand out a little bit uh, within the kind of road network design here, rather than it just being on a road and kind of lost in the endless expanse. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring down little road here and then just cut through a little bit of this commercial squeeze it off and then just create a little dedicated spot where my police department can sit 
So likewise again, at the police station I will hold criminals and also send police cars out to deal with crime as and when it arises around the city. So very similar with your schools and fire, you want to make sure that each area of the city has enough kind of education, uh, fire and police coverage as well. Okay, so I'm getting another power issue here now. That's fine, that's going to be lack of availability. So I think what I am going to do is just very briefly bump up to 110% power budget. Maybe go for a little bit more, 120 perhaps, touch more, 130. There we go. So we're just producing enough electricity now. And I'll probably get to the point next milestone where I'm ready to place in the coal power plant. If we come back into our loans, we do have a new loan with that milestone which we can take. We can pay the old one and then take it again, which bumps us back up to 71,000. But one thing you do want to make sure with your service assets, when you're placing them, you want to check uh, their weekly upkeep costs. So this one's 480 a week. The fire station is 560 a week. So the way to judge if you can you know, build these buildings is can your weekly income take that to 560 a week? If I was to place in another firehouse now, that would really drain my weekly income. So I don't really want to place it just yet. Not that we need it, but, you know, just balance it against your weekly income figure and the city afford to take that weekly hit. I'm also going to start bringing my road network down on this side as well. Okay. So we can have a look at that new tile that we unlocked. If you hit the little globe icon down here, you now have options to expand kind of north, east, south and west off of the map, right? I'm not going to pop one of these just yet. I will eventually pop one so we can move over this side and expand the residential up to the highway, at least within a sensible radius anyway. But again, you know, the early game is all about continually satisfying these demands to move through our milestones. It should be noted that the highways are loud roads as well, which should be factored in if you're building residential close to them. If they are too close, they will start to complain of noise pollution. You can just get a little brief heat map of how and where the noise is starting to appear in this city as well. Okay, so I think I'm going to start expanding out my uh, commercial offerings. Again, just following kind of the curve of the main street here, right? You know, once you've kind of decided on the theme, you can really start taking inspiration from a whole host of places for city skylines. You know, watching other YouTubers, looking at Google Earth, You'll probably start noticing things when you're out and about as well. <laughs> you know, like, how do you get on and off the highway uh, in your local town? You'll absolutely appreciate it a lot more after playing cities. <laughs> all right. Well, this is a really nice interchange to watch flow as well, especially with all these curves. Nice little symmetrical design. A bit more detail as well once we come to it, okay? So uh, the next milestone we want to go and hit now, which is where we'll end today's episode once we hit Tiny Town, uh, it gives us access so a bunch of landscaping tools and decoration options and parks and that's where things start to get very interesting indeed. At least for me. <laughs> Alright. You know, there, there really is, there's not one right way to play this game. Some people will get enjoyment out of other things where others don't. And uh, it's all about just finding a play style and a method that works for you. Because there really is, you know, no wrong way to play, so to speak. To an extent, anyway. Okay, so again, I'm just maximizing my zoning spaces uh, creating room for my little repeated uh, specifically zoned 4x4s to come through in most places anyway when I don't miscount. Yeah, I'm having some 2x2s to grow here. And then I can continue that 4x4 zoning. I'm also getting big demands in commercial and industrial here now as well. So I'm going to continually satisfy these by allowing this kind of main road here to develop as a high street having lots of commercial around it and you do actually get new kind of commercial and residential assets with the dlc too so if you're maybe looking to kind of refresh the asset palette then the dlc is going to help with that otherwise everything's ticking along quite nicely uh, traffic is flowing well definitely want to come back and finish off this industrial design that we started uh, let's bring it out by let's go for five more and then connect straight back in there and again Great opportunity to start zoning up with generic industry. Which is going to produce goods and provide jobs for our sims as well. Okay, it's also pollutive. You'll notice how it changes the colour of the ground. Uh, this can be hidden with the part life tiles. There's also mods to turn this off as well. It's kind of 
unanimously agreed as one of the less appealing features of the vanilla game is the pollution aesthetic. It does turn the ground a kind of a rancid purple colour. But uh, it is just the vanilla game. Can be changed if you want. So see now, I'm getting the power icon again. This is fine. I now want to place in a coal plant. I'm going to come back over to where my landfill site is. Uh, keep my polluted buildings together. For the most part anyway. Uh, we're going to be producing vast amounts more power now. Yes, so we can afford to bring the budget all the way back down if we need. Again, just trial and error. Moving this slider around. So it kind of gets to the point in the game with the sliders where your weekly income doesn't really matter that much anymore. You will just make so much money that plays an infrastructure like this. Doesn't really have that much of an impact. We can see here where we're not jumping through. So that's fine. I think what I'll do here is just zone up a little bit of industry there. That'll zone up and then power will jump through. We have a new warning icon over here. Let's go see what's happening. Pretty obvious, right? These guys do not have water. So the first thing to check when we see this icon is to check that they have pipes. They do not. That is the problem. So I can now bring out this network of coverage. They will fall into the radius. And as the game realizes, the warning icons will disappear. Again, that's another icon that if left unattended, the building will abandon. It does take a little bit of time to happen. It's not like an instantaneous thing, but you should be aware of it. So we can do some uh, nice things with generic industry to decorate it a little bit more. But again, whilst you're getting used to the game, just stick with these kind of rigid grid shapes, right? We'll look at some, uh, especially very fleshed out industrial areas uh, once we come to have a look at the industry's DLC in however many episodes time of this series. But you know, this is all just kind of fairly calm and nice now. We've got the city established, we're making nearly two grand a week. Uh, our demands are still continuing to spike and it's all about just moving toward uh, that next milestone. Again, another one of these little water symbols appear. Just a case of dragging out the coverage and everyone's fine. So I've just been hanging around and waiting uh, until we hit 1600, which we're very nearly at now. Okay, so the city's at a good point, and there is our tiny town milestone. And this is one of my favourites, because we get lots of happy landscaping tools, parks and plazas. Uh, of course, this screen will look vastly different depending on what DLCs you do and don't have. But we get lots of interesting things in here indeed. Okay, so let's pause the game. So one of the first things that we've unlocked here is the high school, which is access to satisfy the higher education demand which we currently have zero capacity for, and there is 288 eligible. So let's place in a high school, shall we? And again, because it's kind of a nice service asset, I think it deserves its own space. So we're going to place it up along here, draw out a new road for it to sit on, and then we're going to place my high school here. All right. And again, everyone gets happy as the game plays. The capacity will now go up to 1,000, which... This high school provides a thousand students. Now the next thing we've unlocked here is the parks and plazas tab, which now gives us access to a whole bunch of new parks, which increase the land value and also make the Sims happy around them. So let's go ahead and find a park here. Why don't we grab this dog park, right? So let's go ahead and find a nice little place for this to sit. Why don't we place this on the corner here. I'm going to lose a little bit of zoning for which I'm just going to trim up because I don't want weird shaped houses growing here. And that's going to be nice, okay? Nice little park here. It's going to make Sims around happy. It's also going to help level the houses up. And it's going to be a nice little bit of corner decoration. Another thing we also got access to was the landscaping and disasters tab down here, which is a little shovel in the dirt. And coming across to this tab here, we have pathways. Now there are new pathways added with the Campus and Part Life DLCs and also After Dark brings cycling as well. So the vanilla game will just have access to pavement paths and gravel path. Now a pathway will allow Sims to walk a uh, distance. Okay, so as I draw these connections in, I'm going to have one here as well. And then also here. Having lots of walkability with pathways in the city will stop Sims from driving, which means that there's less cars on the road. So as I just start to draw in these little pathways here, again, they still follow the rules of all the snapping that we've done with the roads. It can be easier to turn off all the snapping here for pathways in awkward spaces. So 
just as the sims begin to pick up these crossing points now, we'll see them come into use. See, there we go. You can walk onto the high street now, rather than having to walk, or even worse, drive all the way around. And I might lose a bit of zone in here and have a pathway come through and go down into a 2x4. I'm happy with that. Don't be afraid to delete zoning as well. And also, try and stay away from the mindset that everything has to be zoned, okay? You know, not everything has to have zoning on it. Save space for some open kind of green belt and parkland to develop. It will give the city a lot more personality. So there's a prime example I can see right here. I'm going to take away all these little props. I'm going to draw in another pathway here. And then come across to my uh, tree tab here, which is under the same landscaping tab. And we have access to a whole bunch of trees. So why don't I grab a small bush? I can now line this pathway with bushes. And then why don't we focus on a larger tree? To sit in the middle spaces here. Trees will also reduce a little bit of noise pollution. So they do have some benefit. But it's also just going to help landscape. A little bit of transitional green space between kind of Main Street and outer lying suburbia. If you like, okay? And again, the DLCs, once you get access to fencing with park life and industries, these detailing palettes can become a lot more fleshed out and a lot nicer. Yeah, there's plenty of this sort of stuff uh, on my channel. If it does kind of take your fancy, all right? So whilst the trees themselves don't really make a difference to land value, the park assets certainly do. So why don't we grab another park asset here? Let's go for maybe a small park, okay? Why don't we place this? up on the corner. Again, everyone gets super happy. This is going to help everyone level up. Uh, and with some of the park assets themselves, you can't actually draw pathways out of them. Uh, not every single path asset it has to be noted. Uh, just a few of them. But you can continue to increase walkability. Okay, trim up some of these trees as well. Maybe even factoring a little bit of commercial zoning to sit next to the park here as well. Right, in these spaces, that might be quite nice. So you can start to come up with your own little designs and little just specks of detail and personality that we can add into the city uh, with these park areas. There's also uh, a great opportunity to add uh, walkability uh, over the highway. We can have an elevated path here. And again, this functions exactly the same as the roads. Uh, controlling your elevation step and page up and page down will increase the height of the pathway. And we can get people uh, walking back and to across here. So I think what I'm going to do is partner another park asset. Under this tab right here for other parks, we also have a basketball court or a tennis court. The tennis court comes with the European theme. Otherwise, you'll have the basketball court. So I'll place a basketball court next to my high school. Just come ahead and grab that pathway. And I'm going to have this run across. Again, I'm going to elevate up by a minimum of three points using the lowest elevation because that's what we need to clear a road. See if we try and do it with two, it'll say it's occupied. Has to be at least three elevations on the smallest step to clear it. And we're going to have this pathway run straight across. And then back down into Earth. And we'll see, as the AI reads this, it's now going to be a faster way for people to get back into to work. Which will also stop them driving, alright? Because they can now walk. Which is always massively helpful. We can do something similar here as well. Okay, that's going to be nice for everyone. You can continue to bring in your tree and bush patterns. Just detailing in any way you see fit. Everyone's palette and preference will be different here. That's kind of the beauty of the game, right? And we can just have that there now as a little spot of personality. And there's some people beginning to use the bridge. You can check where they're going if you like. Tony Scott, he resides at the Madison residence and he's going to work at Goods Unlimited. And he's choosing to use our little pathway. So Sims will walk and indeed cycle uh, quite a long distance before they choose to drive. So using pathways in and around kind of all points of the city just to keep people walking um, is a really good habit to get into kind of right at the start of the game. So you can just see where I'm bringing these pathways through. Just continually increasing walkability. People are already picking them up. Again, because I just love detailing i'm going to bring uh, trees will also be affected by pollution as well you can see as you place uh, a tree in a pollutive area it's basically dead compared to not in a pollutive area nice and vibrant 
So trees will die within pollution. So that's something to bear in mind. Why not come into a medium tree? Why don't we grab these palms and we can maybe run a little repeated palm pattern through the highway now. And really there's just endless inspiration. Like I mentioned, you'll start noticing things like this as you're driving around at your real life town or city. But you can you know, just come up with some really nice ideas like this, okay? Why don't we introduce kind of a bigger tree in the middle of the roundabouts as well? Okay, and we can even, you know, bring pathways in here as well if we like. It's probably easier to do this with no snapping on. Just create these little freeform curves all around the tree, okay? And there we go. Again, many different shapes and variations. And patterns you can run these sorts of designs in. Bring in some smaller trees around the base to kind of decorate the roundabout out as well if you like. All entirely open to your own interpretation. Okay. So now using all these tricks we can move into a detailing time lapse and start tidying things up. Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares below really help bring more people to my channel. If you'd like to help support my work directly, there are links down to Patreon and Instant Gaming below. And equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. But this method gives you a nice solid foundation city skyline from which to expand. Into your own style, like I've mentioned today, there are many different ways to play this game and a absolute plethora of content available on YouTube to go and dive into. There are some truly wonderful creators in this community and you will find a play style that suits you. If you are enjoying my play style, uh, there are videos currently up on screen right now uh, of my uh, two full vanilla cities, uh, Palavan and Novaria. Novaria is a snow build and Palavan is a boreal build. So if you're enjoying my style and like to see these very kind of aesthetically focused detailed cities, then uh, do consider giving the channel a little subscribe. We'll plug that instant gaming link again if you find yourself enjoying City Skylines if you are new and want to explore the DLCs which are good, which again we have a DLC tier video link below as well, then that link does support me directly, so thank you very much. Uh, do hang around for the rest of the video, I will include some cinematics of the kind of city coming to life now as people are 
picking up all these different walking paths and we've got all the trees in now and it's looking quite nice so we'll have a look around with some cinematics but otherwise i want to thank you all so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day